right, so let's take a few minutes and I wanna go through everything that I put in the carbon cub, my EDC or everyday carry. And, and I break it out into three areas here. So, and I'm gonna talk about that. One is the EDC, the stuff that's in the aircraft all the time that we have in there, safety gear, different stuff, and we'll go through all that tools. And then I have other gear that if I'm going out over extended trips over water, like over the Bahamas, or I'm gonna be out over the ocean somewhere, this one will end up coming with us, but it isn't my EDC. It's not in the everyday carrier. And we're gonna go through this and talk to you about everything in this. So this is separate in itself that if we're going in that kind of trip we'll put in. Then I have another one that this is my EDC that just goes with me everywhere. So this is a particular case that we, you know, we jump in the plane, it goes with me. I get out of this plane, I get in the Bonanza, it goes with me. I get in the, the other planes, it goes with me. We're in the car, it goes with me. So this is just kind of my EDC that goes with me everywhere. Some of the stuff in here is redundant to things you'll see here, but we'll talk about why we have this too. So we're gonna get to that as well. But let's talk about the EDC that we have here. Of course, our safety equipment, and then we're gonna get into some other fun stuff. Obviously, the first thing we're going to talk about is life vests. Clearly, we're in a float plane, so we are wearing these when we're uh, going out to do some water sports and stuff. Now, key thing here, these cannot be automatic. No automatic when you're in a float plane like this. Why? Because if you happen to you know, do a landing and you flip and the water starts coming in and water hits these and it blows, you can't get out of the plane. They're going to blow up while you're still inside the plane. So these are manual. Careful, don't just walk into a marine store and get a uh, life vest for your amphib or your float plane because the majority of them are automatic. The other thing is what I slip in here and I brief my passengers is I have uh, other stuff like uh, glow sticks with string on them. So we have glow sticks in there and I make sure that they know that that's there. These are obviously what goes in for our life vest. Now, when we get to this kit, I have two more backup life vests and also we have uh, a raft and things like that that we'll talk about but so there's other life vests in there when we're going over water and the next thing i want to go over is fire extinguishers and i do want to talk about these too because these are from one of our partners called h3r their fire extinguishers are awesome obviously they get paperwork to, for aviation to go in with you and stuff and they have compact fire extinguishers that are pretty powerful and uh, more powerful than one that's bigger than this now we use halon now if you want to know more about why halon and stuff log into your E3 Aviation or your E3 Firearms or Off-Road membership and we have a whole course and stuff in there about the different types of fire extinguishers and why we use these and stuff. And, and by the way, a lot of stuff you have here, even you know for H3R, is, uh, you get discounts as an E3 member. So just log into your platform. This is one of our partners. They do a, a great job. This is kind of our Molly set, which is from TAC Aero. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit because this hangs right behind the back seat and it's it's great because you get easy access to the stuff that's on here this is a strobe light that is on here we also have a leatherman that's baked right into this molly system i do have a leatherman that i keep up inside there too as well tourniquet tourniquet with scissors so you can cut off clothes or something like that so we do have tourniquet in there obviously we have a survive not a survival kit but first aid kit this is a pretty a pretty intense first aid kit um the biggest thing I encourage everybody to do is open up your kit. You know, don't just buy the kit and throw it in your plane. Open it up, know where stuff is, know how to use it. Most kits come with paperwork that tells you about all the different stuff, all your different, you know, medications and things that are in here and how to use them. But know how these all work. It's, it's really important. And by the way, log into your either off-road membership or your firearms, aviation. We do a whole medical course, like a trauma course, medical course on how to use everything, how to do splints, all that kind of stuff. Know how to use it. We teach you how to use that here in, in your membership. So this is always right here in the back of the plane. Snake bite kit. I want to talk about this for a second. You know, we're down here in South Florida. We're flying out over the Everglades and stuff, and there's some pretty nasty stuff out there between alligators and snakes and spiders and stuff. So we keep snake bite kit on the carbon cup. I don't have it in the other planes, but we do keep it on the carbon cup because we're usually flying low. A snake bite kit is not the stuff you get on Amazon where it's a little suction cup thing and they sell them as snake bite kits. That is an absolute no-no. Again, log into your membership and learn how to use this stuff. But if you think about a snake bite, you don't want one of those suction cups that is pulling the venom back down to this concentrated area. That's not a good thing. That's not what uh, a snake bite kit should do. Those are more for like spider bites or something like that. But a snake bite is totally different. All your instructions are in here. There's compression, there's getting down, getting your legs elevated. There's things you want to do differently and compress and stay calm and get help or have somebody get there. 
versus those little suction cup things. Those are a no-no. So this is a true snake bite kit and you can see it right here. So that's a key thing. So we usually have that uh, out there with us. This is our Molly system that basically hangs in the back of the airplane like this so we can get access to that. Love this tack arrow uh, kit there. Obviously from a safety standpoint, we do have an oar that's uh, on the float. It's right on the inside of the starboard float. The other things we have that uh, are always in here is our Garmin inReach. So by the way, also E3 members, you get a really great deal with Garmin inReach. Make sure you log into your platform and get one of these inReach 2 or the inReach Mini 2s. These are awesome. I have a couple of them and I, I actually put them on the life vest for my passengers too. So, and I just teach them how to use it. It's hanging on there. We always have our Garmin inReaches in there. We always have radios and most of the time I have two radios and it's in the other one here too. This is just a backup radio for our aviation radio. And then I usually have a small marine radio in, in here as well. Cause as a float plane, you know, you're landing down in the keys or in certain areas where there's coast guard and things like that. You want to have a marine radio on there as well. So we do have marine radio, you know, I'm not going to get into this. This isn't getting into having your documents and you know, your license and, you know, your charts and all that. That's not what this is about. This is more about, you know, this stuff that we have, that's safety equipment and other things. Quick note on, this looks like a lot and it looks like it's a lot of weight, but let me just say that I have it all out right now. Usually it's packed in, it's packed in the stuff and it's in some nice, neat little compartments. Now I limit myself. I try to go no more than 70 to 80 pounds. Everything here is less than 70, 80 pounds, except for when I bring this with the raft and it kicks it up to more like 90, 95 pounds. But I give myself a limit. I said 80 pounds. And some of you guys out there might say, oh, well, now you got extra weight and you know, you got more fuel. Look, I'd rather spend the extra 50 cents in fuel and make sure I have all this insurance uh, uh, with me. It looks like a lot, but it's not. Believe me, when you see it in the plane, you'll see that it's, it's very compact and there's not a lot there. In our carbon cub, you know, again, this is the X cub and it has the really nice interior and stuff. So the back seat has a holder for the iPad and this ties into the panel and stuff like that. We have uh, a regular iPad that's in the passenger seat so they can see the charts and stuff, you know, airspeed and everything and the map and things like that on their iPad in the back seat. The other thing that's cool about it and having somebody in the back seat is both of these iPads, because this one goes in the front, both of these iPads, because it's a float plane, I also have tide charts I have marine charts and things on it. So if we're gonna land in a certain area, I gotta look at the tides and I also wanna look at the depth in certain areas and stuff. I don't navigate from it or anything really. Again, what I use it for, especially being in a float plane, is I check out my marine charts and to uh, maybe check out fuel prices and stuff like that. So that's usually sitting in there because also we have the Garmin panel in here, full glass panel. So, you know, we don't use this to navigate. All right, so in this kit is uh, our tie down. It's called the claw. And it's basically so if we're out in the wilderness or beaches or whatever, you know, you, you basically have this little mounts that you spread out, nail the, the bolts into the ground, and then you can tie down underneath the wings. This is probably the heaviest thing that's in the plane. It's about five, six pounds. So this is uh, something that I always have in there if we're going to like sh shooting ranges or if we're just going to somebody's yard or something in the cub, which we can do. Um, I have something to tie it down with. That's usually in there. And, and again, that's the EDC that's always in the plane. So in here, this is kind of what I have the tool bag and some of the stuff goes in here. What this bag is, is from bone dry. And the reason I put all my tools or anything that would rust or anything in this bag is because this is a special bag. This bag is made in a way and has materials in it that once you seal this up, anything inside this bag won't rust. It's uh, it's just an awesome bag. It's rugged. It's great. Go check them out. But again, as an E3 member, just log in, you got some crazy, crazy discounts on, on these there. But inside the tool bag, I do have a micro start. So this is an XP3 for starting uh, planes if somebody's battery dies. Um, and I do have the hookup on our battery, so I don't need the clips and all that. You just plug in and start it. Haven't needed, haven't needed it. I use it more for everybody else, more than anything else. But we have that. And then of course we have like our toolkit and other tools and stuff that are in here. And then I put some of the stuff, like I said, it's all compact. Some of this other stuff goes in here and then this gets closed. Love these bags, check these out. We keep our firearms and stuff in them too because uh, it keeps them from rusting. We are just getting ready to put in um, some sheepskin for the seat belts because we do have a four point, har four point harness on, on these. So we're gonna try a couple different ones. Let's talk about a couple other things that uh, we're going, this one, this is new going in the plane and then we keep this in the plane. This is from AeroShades. 
Now this is a shade with suction cups that's going up on the very top. You know, the whole top of the carbon cub is a big one giant uh, skylight all the way back to the turtle deck. So we're going to do a whole separate video on some of these things, some of the add-ons that we're putting in, and uh, we'll let you know about that. But uh, so this is going in the plane. Okay, these shades are awesome. These are from Jet Shades. Now, if you watched our Bonanza video, we put all brand new Jet Shades in there, the, the new versions, the version two pros, I think they call them, or premiums. And look how, how, look how thin they are and they bend and stuff like that. Now, in the Bonanza, we had the original versions for years and we just changed and upgraded to the new ones. These are called Cruising Shades, same material. They are awesome. You can see how they got rubber on these and stuff. So you can put these anywhere up in the cockpit, up in the window, block the shade. There you go, look at that, block the light there. So um, we have two of these. Um, I just keep one in this plane, but you can put them on the sides and they don't scratch anything and they're just very bendable. These are cool. Check out Jet Shades if you haven't checked them out already. And like I said already five times, you know, as an E3 member, you, uh, of course you get some pretty good discounts from, from Jet Shades on these. I'm gonna get to a couple fun things here. These chairs are just awesome. This is extremely light, but I'm gonna open them one up and show you guys. So by the way, C L I Q. Check these chairs out. They're a little expensive, but they are so awesome. Look how compact these are. And basically pop it open. You pull the legs out, pull these up. Look at that. These are, and they're so comfortable. We, we don't have uh, any kind of relationship with this company, but I just wanted to show you guys because they're just really cool chairs. And you look at how small this bag is and you have two of these run up on a beach or something, pull those out, it's great. So some of the lines and stuff, let's talk about that because uh, we do some different stuff. Obviously on the plane, you can see our dock lines around there that are on the cleats. And we'll do, a whole, we'll do a whole video on the lines and how we tie them and, and how that's all set up and stuff. And then you can see them here on the wings, hanging down from the wings, and there's a little loop on there. So we have an anchor, uh, a four pound anchor with a 50 foot thin line. So if we do pull up on the beach and we need to anchor, we can put that anchor up on the beach, tie it up. Or if we need to put it out a little bit and pull the plane off a little bit, we pull it off and then also have uh, this line. So this line is like a tow rope for tubes. The reason that I like this 60 foot line uh, that we put this snap swivel on the end, bronze snap swivel, is because it doesn't mildew, it doesn't, you know, stain or create any kind of issues but from sitting in the water or something, you know, you can just leave it. Cause then it's just easy. So if we pull up on a beach or something, I'm like, oh, I need that extra line. I just grab this, can snap it on one of the wing loops or I can use one of the loops on the end of the dock lines. That's more for if we got to have a line that goes up to a tree or something so that we can tie it. Or if I put the anchor and there's a little bit of waves and I'm just not feeling like that's enough, then uh, I can do one of the anchor off one side and tie this off one of the dock lines to a tree or a rock or something so that is usually then and this is light that's the other reason you know if you were to get big dock lines you know they're three times heavier than this so this is a very light you know uh line that they have on there i do want to say before we talk about firearms these are all clear clear so we we typically have some of the firearms uh i usually travel with some of them something on there you know, we might have small nine millimeter or something. And if you can see, there's a little scabbard on the uh, door that's on open right now. We'll show you that, but that's where this basically slips right in. It's, it's uh, secured, it's in there. So when you open that up, you can get access to it. This is a 300 blackout integral suppressed. This is uh, great for us down here in South Florida. You know, if we end up in the Everglades somewhere with alligators or something like that, um, then We'll, we'll have this on board. This goes into a scabbard. It's usually in a case. I typically fly with them unloaded. Um, that's just me. It just depends on your mission. A lot of this stuff depends on your mission because, you know, this is great if I'm down here in South Florida and I get to deal with alligators or something like that if, if we're, we're out in the Everglades. But look, if you're up in the Northwest or Idaho or, you know, any of those areas with grizzlies or black bears or stuff like that, these are not the solution. And I'd hate for somebody to unintendedly have to, you know, kill wildlife because we're in a situation that we shouldn't be in or something or we have an issue, but that's where you might be using bear spray. You know, down here in the Everglades, I have this. I'm up in the Northeast or the Northwest or something. Bear spray is definitely the way to go. This is way better than this. 
reality is if you hit a grizzly or a big bear with this, you're just going to piss them off. That's all there is to it. And you hate to have to do that. Bear spray, that's the way to go. So depending on the missions, my whole EDC tweaks just a bit based on where I'm going to be and, and what's going on. That's how we deal with uh, the firearms on there. Again, these are light. The reason I love the Q, this is just, this is 300 blackout. And we're talking very, very light. So obviously we want to be worried about weight inside the plane, but uh, red dot on it, of course, light, which is one of the most important things on it. So it's not a big, heavy AR-15 or anything like that. It's just a Q300 blackout. This is a ditch bag. And in this ditch bag, uh, this bag floats. I have the extra uh, life vests if I need it. We have flares, flare guns. Uh, we have some water and stuff in here. We have glow sticks and we have a four person raft. So, and there's some other things like this is a, a full blown marine uh, EPIRB. Again, this is there's some other stuff in here, you know, survival stuff, but this is basically a ditch bag that if you have to land in the ocean and you got to get out of the plane, grab this bag grab your EDC, and then you've got what you need for being in the ocean, especially the raft. Now, some people might say, you're in a float plane. What do you need all this stuff for? Let me tell you, if you land in four to six foot seas in the ocean, uh, first of all, if you're actually able to get it down upright and stuff, it's a pretty good chance the plane's not going to stay upright for long. And you're, if you're in four to six foot seas, especially if it's chop or something like that. So just know that, you know, having this, if you're going to be way out over the ocean is great. It's just like the life vest. You don't want them automatic. You don't want your raft automatic. And as a matter of fact, never open this raft, obviously in the plane. There's a rope, a little string, like a rope on the raft, and it's right inside here. As soon as you're gonna need it, you pull that string out, throw the raft outside, open it from there, and then it's away from the plane, and you still have the string attached to it, and you can get in it from there. We do a whole course that we did here with Banyan Air Service on flying to the Bahamas. And we talked all about how to deploy a raft out of your aircraft and things. And uh, make sure you check that video out inside your membership. So that's this kit right here. Again, this is only if we're going to be heading out over extended water trips. This is the regular EDC I grab, go in and out with. It's got stuff like your power cord, compass, another tourniquet that's always with me wherever we go. We have a rescue me tool, which explodes windows and things. So if you haven't seen this, uh, log into your E3 firearms membership, but this thing is a must have. You should have this in your car. You should have this everywhere, especially in South Florida here when your car can go off the road and be in a canal and stuff like that. What this tool is, is it explodes. So if you push this down on a window windshield, you hear that? What it does is it explodes out this fine pin and your window shatters. Even if you have to do it a bunch of times to get out of an airplane window, which obviously we have ex you know, exit windows and stuff, but this is great to have. So we always have this with us. We have sat phone. We have another whole medical kit that's in here, sucking chest wound kits, bleed control kits. And then, you know, we have all the basic stuff like some extra batteries, pencils and stuff. You know, we have like bug spray. So this is like my quick EDC thing. There's a lot of stuff in here. We'll do a whole separate video on everything that we have in our EDCs. You know, over here, you've got a, another flashlight, a Surefire, of course. This is a Leatherman, but it's a Leatherman that also has the tools to clean your firearms and things like that. This is a whole different kit. Now we have pain medicine and things like that in here and it's all labeled and everything. It'll be a great video. We'll lay out all of this stuff and we'll show you that. But also just log into your membership. We have a whole course in there. That's what we put in our carbon cub. I know it looks like a lot, but it's not. You know, look at it. We'll give you the video when it's in the plane. You can see how it's all set up and stuff. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you learned. But please give me some comments. What do you guys like or what do you put in your small planes that you fly with your EDC all the time? Tell us maybe what we should do differently. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Take care, everybody.